like there's one in uh, Serangoon Garden, right? The zebra I use all the time. Uh. Every time I use, I don't have to pay money. I can just use as much as possible, okay? When I use the traffic light, I press that button, ding, you know, and then I wait for the thing to turn green. I just walk across, all right? The traffic light also serves a purpose. It, it, it uh, you know, it um, regulates the traffic so that when it's time for me to cross, you know, I can cross safely without getting crushed by a car, right? So it's a good that I use. Now, how come I don't have to pay eh, for this item? But it's a, it's a thing that I use, eh? you understand? But how come I don't have to pay for this item? Have you thought about that before? No. Now you have to, uh, why? Uh? Okay, let's say if, Okay, let's say if uh, there is a zebra crossing that you have to pay, would you use it? No, 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 yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't use it, right? Uh, neither would I. But let's say if you have a, um, you know, there's actually such a thing. Uh, I, I think it's in other countries. There is a uh, uh, payable traffic light. Okay, you can use your EasyLink card, you tap, uh, then they will deduct 10 cents and then the light will turn green faster. Okay, would you pay for that? Would you tap? No, why? Why wouldn't you pay for that? Tap, the thing turn green faster, no. And then you can walk faster. Why wouldn't you pay for that? You pay for convenience. I can just wait for the light to turn green. Yeah. All right. Okay. Then the other thing is that, uh, is there a supplier for traffic light? Is there a supplier for traffic light? Like somebody has to build the traffic light, right? Like somebody actually supplied the traffic light, right? So in this case, it's the government. Now, then, uh, actually, the problem is this. Uh, People need traffic lights. Do you need traffic lights? Do you think traffic lights are important in our daily lives? Yes. And then we didn't pay for it. Okay, so the government paid for it. And then there's a supplier. So, but it doesn't make sense. Because by, according to free market mechanism, according to the free market mechanism, if you have a demand, which is people like us, and then you have a supplier, that means those people who make traffic lights. So by right, the free mechanism should work. What? You understand? It shouldn't be free because if it's free, it means that we are not paying a single cent for it. But how come the thing still exists right now? Okay, so, so what I'm trying to bring across is uh, this point that the free market mechanism doesn't work for things like public goods. That means the public goods, uh, as the government, you cannot leave it to free market mechanism. You cannot, you cannot, you cannot say that, um, uh, never mind, I'll just build the road, okay? If someone needs the traffic light, they will pay money for the contractor to go and uh, build a traffic light. Do you understand what I'm saying? These are things that the government must come in to intervene. Why? Because, here's the keyword, the market for traffic light has failed. Okay? Let me just review one more time. Huh? The market for traffic lights or public goods has failed. Do you understand what I'm saying now? Ah, so do you, can you give me another example of a market that has failed? That means if you just leave it to demand and supply forces, right? Nothing is going to happen, right? Nobody is going to build traffic light, but yeah, everybody needs traffic light. Is, is, is there another thing that you can think of? Like everybody needs that thing, right? but nobody wants to pay for it. And then the market will fail. Can you give me another example? Yeah. Roads are very good. Everybody needs roads, right? But nobody wants to pay for it, you know? Like nobody wants to build the road. We are paying road tax, by the way. But nobody wants to go and pay to like, um, let's build another road, you know, expressway from uh, here to Malaysia. Uh, nobody wants to do that. Okay, very good. Any other example? 
that the market fail. That means if you leave it the market forces, nothing will happen. There will not be a price, there will not be a, you know, you will not have goods and services. Public benches, toilets, yes, you're right. Okay, all this stuff. Public benches, that's a great example. Would you pay money? Do you know how much one bench costs? Honestly, I don't know. I think at least two, three hundred dollars. Uh. Yeah. Would you pay two hundred dollars to buy a public bench? Why? But you will uh, benefit everybody or what? <laughs> right? You benefit everyone, ma. Why you don't want to pay? Uh, okay, this is a very important question, okay? Why you don't want to pay? Why? It's too much, you're not using it. Ah, very good, you see? I'm not saying you're selfish, right? I also don't want to pay, okay? So the problem is this, if you buy for the bench, everyone is using it, other people should pay too. You see that? That is everybody's uh, psychology and mentality. Why should I be the one paying? Everyone is using one, then everyone should pay. Uh, so because of that, uh, nobody will buy that item. And because nobody buys that item, but yet everybody needs it, the government is the only one who can make that happen. And that's why the market fails. Got it? The market fail, you know? The demand and supply just, just couldn't hold. It doesn't. It doesn't make. Uh, uh, it doesn't make sense because if they wait for it, the government waits for it to happen. Nothing will happen. Okay. Now we have reached a higher level. Do you do you feel that now you are at a higher level of thinking now? Like you have, you have some enlightenment of some stuff that's going on around you. Do you feel enlightened? A bit. <laughs> Yeah, right. so it cons makes you open your eyes a bit, you know, and then look, look, look around, right? So that you are aware of some stuff that's going on. Okay, I'll give you another one. Uh. Trees. Do you know how much one tree costs in Singapore? Let me Google this. I used to know. I think I forgot. How much does a tree cost in Singapore? How much does a tree in Singapore cost? The littlest tree planters. Okay, let's see. And all the trees cost 105 million. What's this? Okay, under N parks, huh? So it costs about 105 million. 700. Yeah, I, I don't know how many trees are there, right? But uh, every year, every year, the Singapore will pay one zero five million dollars for trees every single year. Now, are trees important, Ethan? Do you think trees are important for us? Yeah. So why don't you pay to uh build a tree? Eh? Wait, is the word build? Grow. Sorry, oh my God. Grow. Why don't you pay to grow a tree? Or why don't you pay money to? Get a tree. Okay, then let's see how much does a tree cost. Maybe we can buy from Amazon. Do you think we can buy online? Can we buy a tree online? <laughs> yeah, you can buy a tree online. Buy trees for sale online. Awesome, man. Uh, trees for sale. Uh, what? Beach tree. I think we got plenty of this, right? So it's about two hundred dollars. Oh, so out some more. <laughs> the tri-color tree is sold out, right? So yeah, view details. But this one doesn't look so nice, huh? Singapore don't have this type. Singapore have what? Rain trees, right? Maple. Maybe let's have some willow. I think willow sounds cool. Yeah. Hey, only ninety nine dollars, ah. Uh. Corkscrew willow trees. Would you pay ninety nine to build a tree? Uh, grow a tree, sorry. Would you buy a tree? No. Ah, why? Why you don't buy? Trees are important. Why? No tree, no oxygen will die. No. Why? Uh? Why you don't buy? 
Only ninety nine dollars, eh? Benefit the whole world, eh? Uh, why you don't buy? Same same argument, you see? Too much. Everyone using it, other people should pay. You see that? Right? It's the same. It's the same stuff, right? It's the bench. So stuff like this, right? These are what we call public goods. Okay, so public goods, nobody will want to pay for it. Why? Because, uh, why? I, you know, if I spend a hundred dollar, what if the dog pee on it, right? What if the tree fall down and hit someone? Is it my fault? You know, what if uh, uh, the tree got fruits? You know, and then uh, should I sell the fruit or you know people can pluck the fruit? Willow tree, I think no fruits uh, But you know, what if there's squirrel? on it do i own the squirrels right so there's there's a lot of all these um uh selfish reasons now nothing wrong with that okay i'm not saying it's wrong huh? but it's, it's it's a rational thought okay rational thinking argument coming in it doesn't make sense for me to pay to buy a tree but everybody buys christmas trees see the problem do you have a christmas christmas tree at home i have two christmas trees at home okay and they are not even real. And I paid like maybe $50 for it. You don't have a Christmas tree at home. Okay. Ah, sorry. I, I have a Christmas tree at home. So why do I spend money to buy a fake Christmas tree and spend money to buy light bulbs, you know, to, to, to put around the Christmas tree that doesn't give me oxygen where I can spend like $89 or $90 to buy, yeah, to buy a tree that can give me oxygen and give other people oxygen as well, all right? So you see, the, the, the free market clearly doesn't work here, right? Because by right, everyone should go and buy a real tree and plant, and after that, uh, you know, you get free oxygen, you stay alive, uh, dude. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, right? It doesn't make sense, the, the free market uh, failed, okay? Yes, you're right, buy it because it's decorative only for your house and I get to enjoy the benefit because I pay for it, right? And my family gets to enjoy the benefit. You see that? Okay. I give you another example, right? Why? Okay. Uh, why would your parents pay for all your meals since young? Did you pay for any of your meals since you're a baby? Did you pay for all your meal? Ah, no, right? Because you're, you're not working, right? So why? Ah? Why did they do that? Why did they do that? We pay them. <laughs> uh, that, that is provided you grow up. Uh, uh, that's provided you grow up, uh, right? <laughs> Some adults haven't grown up yet, okay? So anyway, uh, yeah, of course, you, you, you can think from that point of view. Oh, you're... When I grow up, I will pay them back, okay? But uh, from another point of view is, uh, can you imagine if your parents say, okay, I, I'm going to depend on the free market mechanism. Okay, Ethan at one year old is such a cute little baby. I'm sure people will donate him money so that he can go and buy food for himself. That's free market mechanism. Right? That means if he's not cute enough, then he should die. Oh? He shouldn't grow up, right? He, he cannot survive in this world. Because he's not cute enough to uh to let people you know give him money. You, you, do you understand what I'm saying? So the free market mechanism fails in this type of situation. So there are my point is this: there are situations where the free market mechanism fails, and therefore the government must step in. It's the same as uh my uh, baby argument. Okay, when I'm a baby, my or when I was young, when even even right now at your age, your parents have to support you. They gotta pay for every one of your stuff. Why? Because you cannot, you don't have the ability, right, to go and uh, purchase or to go and uh, uh, make all this happen for yourself, even though it will benefit you. Okay, so your parents will have to provide for you first. Okay, so it's the same with trees. It's the same with uh, roads. It's the same with uh, traffic lights and all this stuff. Because nobody has the ability to go and make roads in the whole of Singapore except for the government. Understand? Nobody can go and grow 
I don't know what's what's the tree population in Singapore. I think I think there's some statistics on that. I think there's like at least a uh, five million trees or something. Okay, how many trees are there in Singapore? Five hundred thousand. Half a million. Okay, so we have half a million trees in the whole of Singapore, and N parks have to map all of them. Okay, that means put a dot 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 where are all these trees. Okay, nobody in Singapore has the ability to go and plant 500,000 trees. Okay, except for the government. That's why in Hokkien, we call them Akong. Have you heard of that before? <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, I'm teaching you all the weird stuff. Huh? Okay, yeah, you go to the army, they will say that, oh, Akong pay for this, Akong pay for that. All right, the Akong is not grandpa. Huh? But I mean, in Hokkien, Akong means grandpa. But the grandpa, the so-called Akong, is actually the government. Okay, the government pays for this. It's the same as when you're a kid. Uh, your parents pay for all this stuff. Why? Because we don't have the ability to purchase or to create them. So we get that the government understands this, right? And the government comes to make. Why? Because the market has failed in this type of situation. Okay? So let's go back to our thing here. I haven't even gone to the notes yet. Okay, so uh, market failure. I know uh, just now you gave me some words like what are the marginal social costs are, marginal, uh, all this stuff, right? We'll, we'll talk about that later. Okay, but we need to first understand the concept of market failure. So market failure means there are some situations where the market fails. People demand the thing but nobody wants to pay, right? Or uh, suppliers can supply, but because nobody pay, they cannot supply the thing, right? So example, you see the first one, you say public good. So public good is an example of market failure. Why? Because of two very important concepts. It's called the non-excludable concept, <clears throat> and the other one is the non-rivalrous concept okay these are concepts that we actually talk about just now non-excludable basically means yeah if you read this point no one will pay for what he can get for free just like your argument you wouldn't pay to 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 build the bench because other people can get it for free or you can get it for free right why would you want to pay for it okay you also wouldn't pay for the the tree why? Because you can get it for free. There's like so many trees, there's half a million trees. Okay, and there's an absence of a price signal. And because nobody wants to pay for them, there is no price. And because no price, no equilibrium, right? Supplier also don't know how to sell you how much. Understand? Okay, so this is called non-excludable. Basically, it's impossible. Let's see, let's see this thing. Is impossible or prohibitively expensive to exclude non-payers from consuming a good. Okay, are you able to create a, 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 a glass boundary so that you know if you buy a tree, only you get to enjoy the tree? No, that's not possible. All right, only Christmas tree can because that's decorative, it's, it's only in your house. All right, but a real tree, uh, not possible, even if you plant it in your own backyard or front yard. Can you tell the tree, uh, you know, your oxygen, uh, please direct it to my house. Okay, don't, your oxygen, please don't, you know, direct it to my neighbor house. You cannot. Okay, not possible. You, can, you also cannot say that, hey, uh, can you don't process my neighbor's carbon dioxide? You must only process my carbon dioxide. Okay, not, not possible. All right, but the problem is people need a tree. Okay. Next, so that's called non-excludable. Now next is non-rivalrous. Okay, like what I mentioned, uh, the benefits enjoyed from a good are not depleted by, okay, I didn't talk about this. The benefits, non-rivalrous means the benefits enjoyed are not depleted by additional users. Now I'm gonna ignore the MC equals zero, all this stuff first, okay? Let's just understand what's non-rivalrous. So after you breathe in the oxygen from the tree, Will it stop the tree from creating more oxygen? No, unless you kill the tree, okay? But uh, you breathing in the oxygen is not gonna cause the 
oxygen uh, production capability of the tree to decrease. Okay, so another example is uh, your when you use the zebra crossing, it's not going to cause the zebra crossing to shrink. When you use the traffic light, the traffic light will not become smaller and smaller and disappear. Correct? Yeah, it will still be there and other people can still use. So it is, uh, after you enjoy the good, it will not be depleted by additional users. Okay, so that is the, um, the great thing about this uh, uh, government, right? Because they come and provide this because they understand uh, this is a public good. Okay, now uh, we, I can extend another five, ten minutes, okay? Because I started slightly later. Is, is that okay? Just another five minutes. Okay, now I'm going to give you a thing, something to think about. Huh? So in Singapore, our museums are free. Correct now, have you been to the museum? Wow, yo. okay. It's free one eh. Why not go more? You can go more, right? It's free. So, uh, you went once because what, your parents brought you there? Friends, ah, okay. So it's free, All right? So, because that thing is free, uh, but did you benefit from going to the museum? Yes, okay. So, can you now use this concept, huh? to explain why museums are free. The non excludable and the non rivalrous thing. Do you think museums are a public good? Yes. But can you, can you explain why? Why is museum non excludable? Why are museums non excludable and why are museums non rivalrous? Are you typing something now? Yeah, I think you're typing. So wait first. No, right, because visits do not depend. Yeah, the, the, I don't know which museum you went to. Uh, National Museum, right, in Dolby God, uh, it has all the paintings and all the cool stuff, right? It will not decrease uh, after you go and see. Okay, but uh, if you want to really argue, right, uh, it's not really about the, 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 the thing deple de depleting in uh, uh, size or value, right? It's about the food space. There's not enough space to walk around, okay? But once upon a time, do you know that museums, uh, you got to pay to go to museums? Once upon a time, all right? Then the next thing is, um, why is it non virus Same thing, right? because the, uh, you, you said non virus non excludable. Uh, is it possible to exclude non-payers? Yes, because there's a door. You can buy tickets to go in. Okay, but what Singapore did is they open up the museum so that it becomes a bit like a public park. Uh, so you can go in and out uh, and you can visit the museum as not exactly as and when you like, but uh, within the time period. Okay, as long as it's within the time period that's open, you can go in. Okay, so, so now it's very interesting to understand why did the government, our Singapore government make it free? Whereas another country actually makes it very expensive. For example, the Paris Museum. The price 
to go the Paris Museum Pass. See this, huh? The Paris Pass. Where's the price? Money? No. Uh, you can go to 50 museums and you gotta pay. Where's the price? Yeah. 120 euro. 130 euro. Okay, 130 euro. Six days, 245. That's a lot of money, you know. What's the euro exchange rate? Euro exchange rate. 1.54. So $130 is about 200, $200. Right? So it's about $200 per adult. Okay, to go to a museum in Paris. Does it make sense? How come Singapore make it free, but other countries uh, have to pay? So of course your argument will be, oh no lah, this is only for tourists. Correct, because you are a tourist, let's say if you are a tourist, and then you go to uh, the, the Paris, right? You will want to pay to visit the museum because you have gone there, got it? Right, but uh, they are citizens also have to pay, no? Wait, huh? How much does citizen of, uh, let's say Japan, pay for museum? Peace Museum. Can you become Japanese? What? Okay, okay wait, wait. In Japan, right? Huh? Japan Museum Pricing. Okay, so there's an entrance fee. The top 10 museum tickets pass with prizes to pay with, yeah, to pay to maintain the museum. But how come Singapore don't have to pay to maintain the museum? Okay, in Japan, this is general admission tickets. It's $24.68. That means even their citizens have to pay. But in Singapore, it's free. Why is it like that? Yeah, I, I know you said, but, but Singapore, you mean we don't need to maintain the museum? We have to maintain the museum, right? Why if someone, you know, plucks something and the, uh, yeah, you gotta pay for electricity, you gotta pay, yeah, we have tax to pay for it. Yes, we have, but Japan also have, uh, Japan also pay tax, uh, Japanese also pay tax. Uh, why do they have to pay $24, $55? And not, not this one, uh, museum, Samurai Museum. Their citizens have to pay, uh, okay? So next lesson, next lesson, we will talk about this type of uh, different scenarios because the reason is very simple. The reason is because in Singapore, uh, our government thinks that museum is a public good. Okay, but then in Japan, the government don't think that it's a public good. Okay, what type of good do they think it is? They think that it's something with positive externalities, right? They feel that it is a merit good. Okay, so merit good, as you can see over here, externalities, uh, something with externalities, right? They are also causes of market failure. Okay. So next week, we're going to uh, explore more on this. So we talk about public good. Next week, we'll talk about externalities. So things like uh, the museum, frankly speaking, is a bit half-half. That means it's not really public but at the same time, it's also not really private, you know? So, so governments would, uh, different governments would use different approaches. As I mentioned, uh, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just they have their own perspective on this thing. Okay, Ken? Okay, do you have any question so far? Do you understand the public good and so far what we talk about? Yeah, okay, great. Uh, so I will see you next week. Okay, so next week Hari Raya, but we'll still be online at three o'clock. All right, hopefully, uh, I'll make sure no other. Okay, I try to use the newer computer, la, right? Because here I got three sets, uh. two of them is actually a bit old. So sometimes when I use the old one, uh, we get this, uh, this temporary breakdown problem. Okay, right. Okay, so if no question, uh, you have access to these notes, you can always go and take a look, right?
And then uh, just message me or anything if you have any question. Okay, that's all for today. See you. Goodbye. Salama Hari Raya. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Wait, I'm trying to connect my screen. Give me one second. My uh, whiteboard is not connecting. That was connected just now. Okay. Coming now. Okay. How's your Hari Raya? Can't really hear that, very, very soft. Yeah. Let me, let me open the board, all right? Give me a minute. Right, we are at the uh, demand and supply, correct? We are at demand and supply. Okay. Which is right. That's my worksheet. Okay, price ceiling, price for done. So, demand, sorry, not demand, supply. market failure. One of my favorite topics to talk about, okay? Market failure. So um, the last week we talked about public goods, right? So public goods are non-excludable and non-rivalous. Uh, do you still remember what is the meaning of non-rivalous and non-excludable? Yeah, are you typing? Wait, uh, let's see. Are you typing or are you able to... Uh, okay, are you able to adjust your microphone a little bit? You got to go to Zoom and then settings, right? Just just increase the microphone, uh, what do you call that? Reception uh, or the volume, yeah, <laughs> volume. All right, just, just increase a bit. I'm hearing a bit, I can hear, hear some sound, but uh, it would be better if you can increase just a bit more. Okay, you try, you want to try and do that first? Go to the Zoom, uh, under Zoom setting, I don't know if it, if it is the computer setting or the Zoom setting, you try and uh, increase the volume a bit. Is it okay? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Mic test, mic test, one, two, three. Yeah, you can hear me, right? Okay. Yes, okay. You wanna, you wanna try the microphone? Have you, have you tried the microphone? There is no setting. Okay. Let's see, okay. And never mind. Uh, then in that case, we just continue this way with uh. mm. us. Next time, okay. It's actually under the, uh, you see, uh, if you go to the green color, the red color thing. Are you using a computer or iPad? Computer, okay. Um, there's a green color, red color bar. Do you see that? Green red by if you put your mouse on it and then the microphone somewhere to the left, right? There's an arrow pointing downwards. 
there's a audio setting so you can click the audio setting you just play around with it right because uh, it's faster if we can communicate but even if you don't have also never mind i'm i'm okay with just talking off the cuff like that okay so never mind uh you can try and adjust as we go along if not uh, i'm okay with just seeing your typing and as you can hear very soft the mic is at max uh. okay la, never mind microphone maximum uh. okay never mind so we shall just begin <laughs> Okay, so this is uh, correcting market failure. So uh, last week I was just talking about market failure and uh, what, what exactly do you mean by market failure? Okay, so we talk about the non-public good uh, as a uh, non-excludable and non rivalrous Can you give me an example of uh, a public good? And then explain why that, you can type it out, right? It's fine. Uh, explain to me why that particular good is non excludable and also non rivalrous okay public bench okay another one give me another one you, you said bench last week drink water give me another one street land to common Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm making you think, all right, of public toilet. Yes, public toilet. Uh, I want to give you one. Huh? Uh, this uh, Army, SAF, is our national defense a public good? National defense. The Army. I mean the Air Force, of course, right? Air Force, Army, Navy. Is it a public good? Why? Huh? Why is it a public good? We don't pay for it, okay? Then what else? Okay, we have to use the uh, non excludable and non rivalrous theory to to explain. Why is it non excludable? Okay, what's non excludable? It's impossible or expensive to exclude non payers from consuming, okay? Non rivalrous means. Um, Benefits enjoy are not depleted. Okay, so using these two examples, can you just uh, link it, apply it to the, the, the SAF, our national defense? Why is it a public good? Using two, right? Every time we talk about public good, it must be non rivalrous non-excludable. It had, you have to use these two uh, definitions to define a public good. Okay, can you try? It's right here, public good. Ah, uh, there national, uh, yeah, actually there. Uh, national defense is a public good. Okay, why? Uh? Okay. Does not excludable means we all pay? Um, no, uh, not excludable means you cannot exclude non paying. I'll give you an example SAF. Um, when they defend Singapore, they're also defending foreigners, right? 
Yeah. So does the foreigners pay for our uh, the defense? Tourists? Tourists don't pay. So it's not possible. You can't. You can't. Yeah. No. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Right? So you cannot say that. Hey, yeah. Tourists. Huh? Uh. We got army here. No. So because you're having fun here. Uh. At the same time, it would be our national defense that's defending you. So you gotta pay. Uh. So. Of course, if they want to do that, they can, but it'll be ridiculous. Um, yeah, it'd be ridiculous. People are like, no, I don't want to pay. Why should I pay for your defense? Okay, so instead of getting them pay for defense, we get them to pay for our food, right? We use GST. <laughs> Got it? Okay, we use GST. So, uh, non excludable means you cannot exclude people who don't pay from using your good you cannot prevent people who don't pay from using like the public bench um, you can of course create a fence around the bench but it's uh, it's going to be ridiculous people will be like well, what are you th you know it's a crazy thing to do okay so that's non-excludable then the other thing it's uh, non rivalrous why is it non rivalrous because uh, do you know I want to see whether you know why is national defense non rivalrous We got to figure out this one. Nope, nope. Non rivals, nope. That's not the reason. Look at the definition again and try and uh so so you see this is a crucial point, very important at this point in time. Uh you gotta be able to apply this concept. Okay, try again, try again. Look at the definition of non rivals And then um I know there's some equation at the bottom though. Ignore that one, right? Just just look at the benefits and joy are not depleted by additional user. What do that mean? What do they mean? You try it, then later I'll explain, okay? Everyone in the army gets the same training. No, nope. wrong argument. <laughs> uh huh. See, you're thinking of national defense in uh, another way. Okay, last try, final try. This is from the consumer's point of view. You must think who are the consumers, right, of national defense, not the people serving NS. Ah, huh? uh, you're thinking it's the people. No, it's not the people serving NS. Okay, it's not who benefits from national defense start from start from there who benefits from national defense yes yeah, singaporeans right so are you, you know, um, okay, let's say I have uh, 5 million people. We, we have a population, I think 6 million plus. 6 million plus, mil, 6 million plus population. So uh, let's say I increase to 10 million. You know, you know, Singapore has a plan by the year, I think 2030 or 2050, something like that, in somewhere around the next 10 years, they're going to increase the population to 10 million. Okay, that is the... Sorry, I think 6.9 million. That is the uh, intermediate goal. Uh, eventually, it has to be 10 million because we, we need to compete. Huh? To be able to compete with other cities, we have to have 10 million population. 
So if we were to increase to 10 million population, will, will the um, national defense get depleted as compared to 6 million? Will it get depleted? Will, will there be less national defense? Because you increase the population from 6 to 10. Ah, very good. You see, the answer is no. Why? Because you still just defend this, this area of land. You understand? You only just defend this. Uh, unless your land area changes, then it gets depleted. But no, you're, you're still de defending this piece of land. Simple as that. Okay? So, so when you have more people enjoying, you know, from 6 million to 10 million population, 4 million people enjoy your national defense now, right? You don't deplete the national defense so-called quality just because there are more people in Singapore. So this is what I mean by non-rivalrous. Non Benefits enjoyed from a good are not depleted by additional users. You get additional users, you will not deplete the benefits enjoyed. Okay, so this is the definition of non-rivalrous. So national defense is one. Uh, last week I think we argue about the museum. So later we're 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 gonna we're gonna study why eh? museum is um, a special case. Okay, or rather, in it's not really special uh, We we classify it as uh, externalities, right? So what's the evaluation? Now what do we mean by evaluation? Uh, evaluation here is that it's very difficult to determine whether something is a public good. Okay, and also it's very difficult to determine how much public good do you need. Like for example, we know benches are a public good. Okay, no need to argue. We know that traffic lights are a public good. But the uh, problem here is um, how much do you need to provide? Do you need one every five meters? Or do you need just one in every two kilometer? Right, so there's no fixed rule. Uh, to determine how much because the use of public the use I mean the creation of a public bench is after all using the taxpayers money so um, it is very difficult to determine that now this is under evaluation okay this point is under evaluation the reason for evaluation is um, uh, okay why what do you mean by evaluation <laughs> That means uh, evaluation is just like um, a consideration. It is, uh, you put up, okay, remember our thesis, antithesis thing. So for every thesis or antithesis, you should have an evaluation. The evaluation will help you to uh, make a more comprehensive argument. It's something like a disclaimer. Something like a disclaimer. It's also something like a break, step the break, right? Thesis, antithesis is like, this is like moving forward, and this is like moving backwards, right? And then uh, evaluation is like stepping a break, just to just to give you an analogy. Uh, you need to have an evaluation in every thesis or any thesis. Reason being, uh, there's no fixed formula for all economic problems. Where is the economic problem here? The economic problem here is, let me just recap again, okay? What's this market failure? So because this thing is a public good, there is market failure because uh, nobody wants to supply this thing as nobody wants to pay for it. It is non excludable non rivalrous So nobody wants to pay for a public bench, but then people demand this thing. So you have demand but no supply, so market failed. Okay, the market has failed in this case. And because the market has failed in this case, government must supply, right? So that is under the policy, right? So policy means government supply. What's the solution, right? So here's the problem. Here's the solution. And this is the evaluation of the solution, right? The evaluation is, uh, yeah, government pay, uh, but how many should you build? Okay, that's one question. Second question is, uh, because you build more benches, it, it uh, you know, increases the tax burden, the burdens on taxpayers. Last week before we end up, we talked about the, um, the uh, amount of money bailed out, right? For the uh, Jiang Airport. No, sorry, SIA, not Jiang Airport. I mean, eventually, Chang Airport as well. So, SIA say they need how much? 10 billion, is it? 10 or 18 billion dollars. So, where does the money come from? The money comes from the government, right? So, the government must be like, why? I mean, as a citizen, you'd be like, why should I give them? Uh? Why don't give to McDonald's, Burger King, KFC? Why must give SIA? Right? So, so it's a burden. 
okay, to the taxpayers when you dish out money, you know, without much consideration. Okay, so this is probably good. Now, just to recap again, okay, do you understand what is this market failure chapter about? How is it related to your um, previous demand and supply? Do you understand this part? It's crucial, right? very critical. Demand but no supply. Ah, very good. Okay, market fail. Huh? Market. Okay, uh, what's the definition of market? <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody asked you. All right, what is the definition of a market? Give, give me your, your, your um, there's no textbook definition, okay? but give me your, your understanding. What is a market? What's the definition of a market? Give me your idea, your opinion. Opinion also never mind. No need fix or correct answer. Okay, so the demand and supply graph showing. Ah, don't want, don't want, don't want. I don't want graph. Give me your, give me your, your understanding. Like a layman, let's say I'm someone who, okay, your who ah, maybe your cousin ah, baby cousin or something. Ah, this ah, uh, Ethan ah, uh, what is the meaning of market? Uh? What do you mean by market? Right. So you, you say oh, got graph showing increase in supply. No, no. When you say market, what comes to the mind? I say market. Layman definition of market. I want, yeah, produce, very good. Exactly, producers and consumers. So what is the best example of a market? The market, right? The wet market is the best example of a market. That's the reason why it's called a market. Okay, why? Because there's suppliers and there are cons uh, there's uh, suppliers, which is the producers, and then there are the consumers as well. They come together in that location called the market, buy and sell things. Okay, they buy and sell things. So there's demand and there's supply. So that's why the place is called market. Okay, hawker center is also a market. The wet market is a market. Supermarket are even more powerful. Supermarket. Why is it called supermarket? Because everyone gets to buy and sell in aircon. Supermarket, okay. Uh, the experience is different. Next time, maybe got I don't know what you know. Super duper market, I don't know, right? Online market, okay. E-commerce market. As long as you have a demand and supply, it is a market. And the most interesting thing about market is that there is a price, price, what do you call it? Equilibrium. That means the price can change according to demand and supply. So let's say today more people like to eat. Qi Chong Fan, right? So the price of Qi Chong Fan will increase, okay? And then suddenly everyone will queue up, right? Uh, and of course in Singapore, we see, wow, the long queue means the food very nice. So we will go, more people will queue up and then the price increase some more. So increase in demand, right? So when there's an increase in demand in Qi Chong Fan, the price, do you know what's Qi Chong Fan? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Qi Chong Fan. <laughs> but do you know specifically what's Qi Chong Fan? Ah, you don't know. Okay, it is the white color rice thing, right? White color rice. They put some sweet sauce and then they put some chili sauce and you can eat. It's pretty nice. Okay, chakwe tel, you know, right? Chakwe tel. Don't tell me you don't know chakwe tel. Ah, okay. So let's say the let's say too many people. Okay, ah, I'll give you the best example. Chom chom, Hokkien noodle. Three uh, uh one hour queue, half an hour queue. Okay, so it's a market that got high demand, right? But the supply cannot 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 uh, fulfill fast enough. Okay, right? so the price go up. So this is a market. So in market failure, we say that the market has failed, right? So an an extreme example would be uh everybody wants to eat this uh hockey noodle, they go to chom chom, and then suddenly their fellow not selling anymore. Okay, so market fail. And then the government is like, oh my god, look, the people are starving because they don't have Hokkien noodle. Then what do we do? We supply Hokkien noodle. You see that? All right, so this is 
the policy. This one I mean by policy. Government can in, comes in to supply, right? So the problem here is, it's very difficult to evaluate, right? You do not know how much of that thing you should supply. Okay, so that is the that is our first um, first cause of market failure, a public good, right? So public good should like think national defense. Next, we're going to do something very interesting. It's called externalities. Okay, now uh, just to check, have you, your school has gone through externalities, right? Is a HBL correct? Under HBL. Yeah. Okay. So, um, give me your best understanding of H, uh, this uh, externality. I want to see where where I can come in. Give me your understanding of externalities. So, first one was public good. Second one is externalities. Because there's public good, therefore there's market failure. Second, second um, thing, second point is because there's externalities, therefore there's market failure. So we understand public good, but what is this externalities? What is this all about? Uh huh. Excellent. Right. Uh, can you give me an example of something with positive spillover, and give me an example of something with negative spillover? If you don't know, it's okay, right? So I know where to where to um talk, start from. If you know, just just say. Don't uh. I mean, I will I will check whether it's correct or not. <coughs> okay, very good. This uh negative externality. Factory throw chemical waste into water, killing crops of the farm. Yep. So that's negative externality. How about positive externality? You know any example? Positive externality? Don't have, huh? Uh, positive externality. Your negative is correct. But how about positive externality? Something with positive externality. Too much supply of good. Of a first party? No. Nope. Yep. Okay, I'm going to show. Uh, okay, I am going to just show you something. Uh, education. Wait, huh? uh, okay, how much? Alrighty, so, so this is the amount of subsidy that's given to schools or people. This is Singapore, right? So if a person's income is, I mean the household income is about, uh, you know, the different range here. Um, if the household income is 2,750 or less, there's 100% school fee subsidy, right? If it is between 9,000 or above, there's 33% uh, school fee subsidy. So the product that I'm talking about here, of course, is education. So education is something with positive externality. Uh, pollution is something with negative externality, right? So uh, your negative externality example is correct. That means a third party suffer. Then how about um, education? How come education is 
something with positive externality. So just now, based on your argument, you correctly stated that, let me draw, huh? you correctly stated that there's a first party. First, okay, basically there's a buyer. There's a buyer, and then there's a seller. So this is like a first party, second party, and then we have a third party. Third party, yeah. So now um, in education, who is the buyer of education? Okay, supplier we know is uh, MOE, yeah. MOE supply education. MOE supply education, all right. And then uh, students, of course, or parents, citizens. Citizens are the buyer of this education. So you have the first party and the second party. Now, something with positive externality will benefit the third party. Okay? So I want you to think about this. Who is the third party that benefits from this? Okay? Now, let's take a look at negative externality. Uh, negative, I use red color. Okay? So for negative externality, using red color, minus, Negative, huh? So the buyer, okay, let's say example um cigarettes, right? So cigarettes, the the so seller of course is the shop, the of cigarette makers. Cigarette supplier. The buyer of course is the consumer, la, smoker. Smoker. So first, first party is the buyer. Second party is the um, supplier, the secret supplier, right? Now, negative externality means third party suffer. Who is the third party that suffer the because of the transaction between the first and the second buyer? I mean, the first and the second party. We call it the uh, second hand smoke, right? Second hand smoke. Now this second hand smoke is is um yeah smoker who can breathe in uh, yeah exactly right the public right anyone around the smoker who can breathe in the smoke so we call it second hand smoke why do we do we call them third parties because they are not involved in the transaction at all the first you know this transaction is between the buyer and the seller the buyer and the seller so obviously both of them benefit right because the buyer enjoy the smoke they smoke the cigarette they, wow i feel great right and then the supplier says, oh i feel great because you buy the cigarette and you spend money i uh, earn money but the third party is like uh people like you and me like we don't smoke you don't smoke right i don't smoke okay so we're like well we breathe in the thing you know it's got nothing to do with us you do benefit but you cause me to suffer got it so that's the externalities. Now go to blue color. Let's look at blue color. Blue color. First buyer is the citizen. Second seller, second party is the MOE. So who's the one who benefit? Who benefits from this education? Future employers, ah, okay, very close, right? The answer is actually the everybody else or all other citizens, the other citizens. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example, right? So, um, because you study. Okay, you study economics and you study all your history or whatever subject, right? You go to the university level. Once you reach the university level, statistics show that uh, the higher education a person has, statistics, okay, statistics, uh, not necessarily 100% true, but statistics show that the higher education level you are, the higher paid you are going to be. Do you agree with that statement? Statistics, right? Higher, I'm talking about probability. The higher educated you are, the higher chance you have of getting paid more. Do you agree with that? Mm. 
do you agree that more education equals to more salary? My teacher said so. <laughs> okay. Because statistically, right? We're talking about math, mathematics, right? So statistically, it's true. It is true. Okay, how, I mean, uh, we, we look at general statistics, meaning uh, you look at Singapore, so we are, high, we are more educated as compared to who? As compared to uh, maybe Indonesia, okay? The density of, um, uh, uh, you know, basically, basically almost like 90% of the people are university graduates, right? Our population, Singapore population, right? Very high percentage. Huh? Like uh, your brother went poly, right? Went poly, right? You see in the army now? Or oh, still in the last year? Accounting, I believe. Last, next year, okay. So after that, is he going to go university? Yes. So you see, chances are he's going to go university. So all poly, can you imagine all poly graduates go university? And it's true for, for my generation as well, right? Uh, my siblings, they're all poly graduates. All of them become graduates after that. Uh, you know, after they work for some years, all my receptionists, all graduates. Every single one is a graduate. Okay, so high, high, more, more education. Singapore, so it's it's true. You know, my statement is true that we have a higher uh, graduate density as compared to let's say a country in Indonesia. So statistically, because of that, our monthly salary, salary, average monthly salary is higher than people in Indonesia. <clears throat> so my statement is true and your teacher is also correct to say that when the education level is higher, the um, chances of higher salary is higher as well. Okay, so who benefits from having higher salary? Now my answer is the other citizens. How come other citizens benefit from your higher salary? Right, now I'm going, going more specific, okay? Imagine you go university you get higher salary. How come uh, I, I am the other citizen, right? How come I will benefit from your higher salary? Tax, Oh, well done, okay? That is the correct answer, right? Did your teacher say this before? Yes, All right? Awesome, man. So you understand the income tax, huh? Some students don't know what's income tax, though. They're like, oh, I don't know what's income tax, right? So because you have a higher salary, you, are, you, you pay more income tax to the government. You, uh, you pay more to the government. By the time you are working, I'm like an old man. I'll go to the park, you know, and then I will see a public bench. I will sit down and then I'll be thinking, yeah, Ethan definitely, you know, contributed to this bench that I'm sitting in the park right now. <laughs> you get it? Right? But let's say if you don't study, then you have lower income. Then when you have low income, you, the government cannot collect more tax, right? Then when I am old, I walk around in the, the public park. And, uh, hey, how come no bench? Huh? There's no bench here. I need to keep walking around. No? Uh, imagine my leg got arthritis. Uh, I cannot sit down properly. <laughs> then I'm like, see, la? Uh, never study. La? Never study. Then the government cannot tax you. The government cannot tax you. Uh, I got no bench. Do you understand? I'm just giving you an absurd example, okay, which is true to a certain extent. To a certain extent, it's true, right? So because we have a higher education, so a third party benefit. So uh, this uh, education, I'm going to write it down. The positive externality is education. So the negative externality in this case is cigarettes. Okay, cigarettes, right? So from the government's point of view, do you think they want more people to study or do you think they want more people to smoke? <laughs> this question sure understand what. Do you think, uh, why? Uh? Because they got more income tax, right? Yeah, they, they, they get more money, then they can do more stuff. You know, they can build nicer benches. So I'm going to sit down maybe with cushion or something, right? Then uh, it's the same with cigarettes, right? We will want, as a government, you want less people to smoke, uh, but you want more people to study. So what can you do? What can you do? So just now, do you see that? 
I will show you this for a reason. So the way for you to encourage more people to, uh, to study is you give subsidy. What's the meaning of subsidy? That means uh, I help you pay your school fees. Uh. Right, government say, hey, I help you pay a bit of your school fees. And then you'll be like, oh, now so cheap. Uh. Now so cheap, I will buy more. Right, so your, your, do you know how much is your school fees per month? Yeah, JC, uh, you know why you don't know? Do you know why you don't know? <laughs> You don't know why you don't know. Because it's insignificant. You understand? Let's say if it's five thousand uh, dollar every three months, you'll be like, whoa, your mom, your mom, your dad will be like, hey, you better study hard, huh? Five thousand every three months. Oh. Okay, now you don't know is the reason is very simple because it's insignificant. Uh I think it's like fifty dollar per month or maybe even lesser, twenty dollar per month, something like that. You don't worry about it, okay, because the government heavily subsidizes it, okay? But when you go to university, uh, the government also subsidizes. Eh? Every semester, I think it's like $6,000. Every semester, $6,000 per semester. But uh, if you go to, if you are a foreigner and you are not being subsidized, right? That means you have to pay, I think maybe like $10,000 or, or more, maybe twice, okay? So as a Singapore citizen, you get a subsidized rate for education, like here uh, in, in, in schools, example, every student, foreigners, right, I think they pay like $200 <clears throat> per month to study in the public school, right? Like maybe your, your friends will have to pay like $200 per month, but for you, it's insignificant, maybe 20, 30, you know, less than 50 cents a day kind of thing, right? So we don't really think about it. Like even myself, I, 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 I don't know, right? What's my secondary school fee or primary school fee, right? Because it's insignificant. But when I go to university, I'm like, wow, so expensive, uh, five, $6,000. Yeah, right? So that's why the government gives subsidy for things with positive externality. Got it? Then what is the opposite of subsidy? Subsidy means give money. Uh. Uh, very good. Tax, right? So uh, do you think they tax our cigarettes? Yes, right. How much do you think they tax our cigarettes? Not a lot. Huh? Your, it's the opposite of not a lot. Huh? Remove the not. Huh? It's a lot. Okay? So how much tax is in a cigarette? Let me give you an example, right? Malaysia cigarette versus Singapore cigarette price. Okay, let's take a look. Malaysia. Eh, okay. Most expensive cities. Uh, don't have Malaysia. Wait, uh, I want Singapore versus Malaysia. Okay, the answer is about 10 times. That means the price of Cigarette in Singapore is like 10 times the price, the, the data, right? It's about, about 10 times, okay? Singapore duty paid cigarette. Ah, okay. So anyway, this is interesting as well. Um, now because Singapore cigarette is so expensive, uh, in Singapore, just, just a rough estimate, okay? One cigarette is maybe like $1.50, I think. But in Malaysia, it could be like 20 cents. Sing dollar, okay? Right, so Singapore dollar, one cigarette is maybe one dollar plus. So whenever they smoke, uh, like one cigarette gone, that's, that's one dollar throw down the drain. Okay, that's one dollar throw down the drain. But in Malaysia, it's maybe like 20 cents or 10 cents, something like that. So how come so big difference is because it's being taxed in Singapore. 
So uh, that means that the additional money for the cigarette that smokers pay goes to the government. Okay, why? Eh? Because they are trying to prevent you from smoking because they know it's negative externalities, right? So now wh why am I showing you this? This is because cigarettes in Singapore are so expensive. A lot of people are tempted to buy from Malaysia because it's so cheap, right? I mean, after all, they're just cigarettes, right? You smoke and then uh, it just disappears, right? There's no evidence. So as a, as a result of this uh, huge disparity in prices, the Singapore government got to do something about um, this cigarette, cigarettes. Uh, so that when the police catch, right? Police see you smoking, uh, or I may see a person smoking, they can tell whether that is a Singapore cigarette or a Malaysian cigarette. Okay, why? Why? Because if, it's, if everybody goes to buy Malaysian cigarette, it defeats the purpose of taxing. Okay, in this, this situation, it defeats the, the negative externality theory. Okay, because people can just buy from Malaysia. So to do that, they introduce these special markings on cigarette. I don't know what they call it, SDPC. So there are some vertical bars with some uh, specifications, uh, like how many mm, how many mm, all this stuff. Okay, on Singapore cigarettes. And Singapore cigarettes also have special marking with like Singapore written over or something like that. Okay, this is to prevent people evading tax. Okay, you see that? So because of, uh, why? Because of this uh, huge price disparity between Singapore and Malaysian cigarettes. And why is that? Because we tax a lot. And why do we tax so much? Because of negative externality. We don't want other people to suffer. Okay. So this is uh, my introduction of positive and negative externality. So can you give me an example of something else that also generates positive externalities, which the government subsidizes? So one clue is that the government subsidizes a lot. And then that thing is positive externality. But it's not a public good. Huh? It's not a public good. Huh? But uh, it's something that generates positive externality. Can you think of another example? And of course, uh, another example of negative externality as well. <clears throat> healthcare, awesome. So healthcare is positive externality. Okay, can you tell me who is the first party, the second party, and the third party in healthcare? Healthcare. Tell me who is the first party, second party, and third party for healthcare. You're correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So first party, sick people, second party, healthcare workers. Yep. Uh, everyone near the sick people. All right. Awesome. That's correct. Because uh, it's like the, this, yeah, those are, uh, you know, the coronavirus, those people who suffer from this virus, right, they don't have to pay a single cent. The government takes care of all the medical bills. Reason very simple. Because if the government doesn't take care of the bills, those who think they have coronavirus, right, will not see a doctor, you know. Then if they don't see a doctor, what happened? They would pass the virus, right? So what do we want? We want everybody, the Singapore government wants everybody who thinks or suspects that they have the virus to quickly go see doctor and heal so that they don't pass it on to other people, right? So they subsidize 100% of the medical fees, okay? So how about if there's no virus, you know, when, when, when we're not in a virus situation, uh, healthcare is also heavily subsidized. That means uh, you pay cheaper prices to, uh, if you're a Singapore citizen. Okay, and then of course, if you go to a public hospital, you pay even lesser, right? Why? Because they want you to get well soon. Ah, so that's the reason why Singapore government doesn't send you a get well card. Because they already pay money for your medical bill. They want you to get well soon. That's a lame joke, okay? So you get well soon you get to work, correct? Like me, uh, I mean, uh, uh, as long as I get well soon, I get to work. When I work, I generate income. When I generate income, who benefit? The old folks benefit. 
Why? Because not only do I not spread disease to them, I also work general income tax. So I pay for the bench, all right? And the traffic lights as well. Can you imagine if I'm sick like one whole year? <coughs> if I'm sick, touch wood, yo, touch wood. If I'm sick one whole year, what, what's going to happen? I don't have income, right? Then I don't have income. Uh, my family suffer. Uh, that's the third party. The other party is who suffer is that um, government cannot tax me. And then when he or she, the government cannot tax me, uh, I cannot contribute to a bench. See that? Right? Give me another example of negative externality. Negative insanity. Okay, traffic jam. Or private vehicle. Private vehicle. So positive anxiety is uh, just as a healthcare. Right? Negative is private vehicle. Uh huh. Private vehicle is like secret, you know. Why? Uh? Private vehicle, uh, not public. Uh. So positive externality is public vehicle, okay? Public transport. Public transport. Private vehicle is negative. Why? Oh, where's the evidence that it is um, negative externality? Because it's being taxed a lot. Right, private vehicle. Now, do you know how many taxes there are for a private vehicle? There is, let me write down. <clears throat> the cigarettes only have one cigarette tax, right? And GST. So, private vehicle, there is the road tax. There's that means a private vehicle owner pay road tax, they pay COE, they pay ERP, they pay GST, they pay for petrol tax. Right, you see that one, two, three, four, five. So they are taxed five times. Right, there's also the um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, path system. So path system is also something like a tax. Uh, right, path system. So there's like five taxes. Tax means what? Pay more money. Right, I'm sure. Do you know what COE? What is what does COE stand for? Yeah, the car owning certificate to own a car. Yeah, it's just a piece of paper, right? So the COE costs around, I think, 30,000 now. ERP, uh, most expensive per day, uh, maybe like $5. Road tax, uh, depending on what type of car you drive, maybe it's like, let me check. Road tax, oh, five, about $600 per annum, right? Path, this one I don't know, I think it's like, one or two thousand, uh, right? One K or two K. GST, of course, seven percent. Petrol tax, uh, maybe like thirty percent of tax. Okay, so it is expensive to own a car. Why? Uh? Why does the government try to discourage people to own a car until such extent? No, but yet people still buy car. No, I also bought a car. No, your family also have a car. Why? Uh? Can you explain why? Why is this something with Negative externality. Secret only tax one time, eh? Car they tax, you see? So much stuff. Yet people still buy. <gasps> oh. And it's lumped together with smoking. Eh? Yeah, okay, I see you all. More traffic on the road cause traffic jam. So everyone use permission. So it's own private transport. Okay. Yep, so you are partially correct. Traffic jam is one thing. The other thing is pollution, air pollution. So air pollution causes what? Bad health, right? Bad health. Now, but is it justifiable to, to 
just because of traffic jam, wow, you impose so many taxes. How do you think they justify so many taxes? COE, uh, 30,000, uh, ERP $5 per day, uh, GST 7%, petrol tax 30%. How do you think they justify all these taxes? Just traffic jam, man. Traffic jam, no big deal. Just stuck inside one hour, right? Right? Just stuck inside one hour. Wow, because of that one hour, we got to pay like five times that was a cigarette. Ah, think about it, right? Who is the externalities? Who is the third party that suffer because of traffic jam? Think about this one. Huh? Public transport suffer? No. 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 Why do you think the government is so motivated to tax people who drive vehicles? Yeah, because of traffic jam. Who suffers most due to traffic jam? Okay, why do you think the government wow, come up with so many? No, no, no. Nah, they don't care about those rush to hospital. <laughs> I mean, they care, but it's not so much. Uh, that they want to tax so much. Why do you think the government tax so much? Because who suffer? Who didn't suffer the most from traffic jam? I, I give you a lot of clue already. Why do you think the Government tax so much. Yes. Why does the government suffer from traffic jam? What do they suffer? PAP famous for what? Huh? <laughs> Wait, this this not icons, right? Not icons. Huh? What, what does PAP stands for? The, the other, yeah, People's Action Party, right? Do you know the other definition of PAP? The, the layman uh, uh, definition of PAP. Like, you know, you go coffee shop, people like, PAP, oh, yeah, is what, what does it stand for? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, not bad, huh? So, you are, you are well informed. Yes, pay and pay. Pay what, huh? Pay money, uh, right? So, why? Because, okay, wait, wait. So, so this is just, 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 just for fun only, okay? It's not an argument, right? It's not an economic argument. I'm just saying that all government, not just PAP, not just PAP. PAP is a party, it's not the government, right? So, so, so you'd be clear. So all governments are uh, interested in collecting money, okay? So money from where? Money from income tax, uh, money from ERP, uh, money from all different ways of taxation because... PAP, pay and pay. All right. Now, if you have traffic jam, if you have a terrible traffic jam, who, how many? Okay, let me show you a picture of a traffic jam. Let's see. Traffic jam. Traffic jam in Singapore. Traffic jam in Singapore is actually not too bad. Ah, check this out. Okay. So, traffic jam in Singapore. You look at this, right? Every every scene, just, just choose any one of these scenes. How many people do you think are stuck inside? Just just one picture. Okay, maybe maybe look at this. Uh, three hours. Okay, let's just look at this scene. Huh? Massive jam city accident. Where is it? Singapore congestion. Okay, just, just look at this picture. Where's the Singapore picture? Okay, this one. Uh. Right, the one in the middle. How many people do you think are inside this traffic jam? Let's say one hour, right? One hour is common, right? Traffic jam, one hour is common. How many people do you think are stuck inside this traffic jam? 700? Okay, I just count. Uh, rough count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So each row, uh, so far, just based on the picture, I, I see like maybe... 
30, 40 vehicles, 40 vehicles, right? It's fair to say 40 vehicles, right? In just one picture. Now, 40 vehicles, uh, let's just assume there are 40 people. That means one person per vehicle. So that's 40 people for one hour. All right. So that is also known as 40 man hours. Now, how much is every person paid per hour in Singapore? If they are working, if they are working, right? Uh, average pay in Singapore is maybe like $10. Okay. We're doing some serious calculation here. Right, pretending we are government, right? So we pretend we are government every one hour, just in one picture. So one hour, uh, we have like 40 packs that stuck. So average pay per hour, okay, uh, it's actually more than 10, uh, maybe like $20 per packs per hour. So you take uh, 20 times 40, that would be you know, 20 times 40, $800 of loss income, right? Just based on one picture, just based on one picture here. Now traffic jams, right? Stretches kilometers, several kilometers. Okay. So just imagine, and this is just one road, right? Imagine the road is like all over the place. So every one hour of traffic jam, it's not just 40 packs anymore. It's probably like 4,000 packs, 4,000 people. So 4,000 people, you multiply by 20, 4,000 times 20, right? Singapore loses $80,000 worth of income. Now this is income for the citizens, but how about income for the government? Government, right? So how much does Singapore tax? The, the the people, the citizens. Okay, let's just give a rough estimate. 10% income tax. Right, so let's say if the government collects 10% income tax and every one hour traffic jam, you lose 80,000. So 10% of 80,000 means 8K. Right, so every one hour of income, uh, every one hour of traffic jam, the government loses $8,000. Would you be upset if, yeah, if I'm a government, I'll be like, huh? Every time there's a traffic jam anywhere, I lose $8,000 of income tax. You'll be upset, right? You'll be, you'll be painful, right? You'll be like, oh my God, I need to stop this uh, traffic jam. So what do I do? Tax the people, right? Don't let them drive because driving causes traffic jam. So uh, we have the path system, the road tax system, the COE, da, 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 all this kind of stuff come out, right? And yet people still drive. Why? Eh? Because we got money, okay? We don't mind paying for the convenience, all right? So that's the truth, right? And then the government is like, oh, well, I collected so much money already. Um, you know, it sort of, uh, it sort of uh, covers this uh, $8,000 that I lose every one hour. So it's okay, lah. continue to traffic jam okay so that's why we see jams every day despite having all these taxes all the different taxes paid there's still jam every day can the government do more can the government like you know if the government really really want to stop traffic jam right like they really really want to eradicate traffic jam do you think they can do it do you think they have the ability to really stop 100% traffic jam Yes, right? Yes, yes, they can. Like now no traffic jam because now it becomes a, a rule. You are not supposed to come out. There's no traffic jam now, right? There's no traffic jam. So my point is they can, if they really want to, they can stop traffic jam. But the reason why they don't 100% stop traffic jam is because their taxes are already being recuperated. Recouped, recouped, they have recouped their losses due to traffic jam. So it's no big deal to them anymore. They're like, okay, just just go ahead, lor. jam, lor. Uh, no, no, doesn't doesn't uh, bother me. Why? Because I already collected back whatever I need. You understand? Okay, same with cigarettes. Same with cigarettes, huh? 
Cigarettes is like, wow, it's negative ne externality. You know? so, so what I'm trying to say is that the third party here who suffer is ultimately the government. If everybody smokes cigarettes, everybody has bad health, uh, and not just the smokers, but the, 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 um, the people who uh, secondhand smoke, right? everybody has bad health, we cannot work productively, we have less income, we pay less income tax. Got it? So the government is like, okay, I need to tax you smokers because they're causing me less income. Private vehicle, I need to tax you drivers because they're causing me less income from the government's point of view. Got it? And then I, after one tax, is wow, you buggers keep on uh, driving some, I tax you some more. Wow, after I tax this, you just keep driving some, I tax you even more. Okay? And we just keep paying, right? So eventually, up to the point where, oh, okay, I collected enough tax already. Uh, it's, it's okay, you can continue to smoke, okay? Because I already covered the cost of you smoking. I already covered the cost of you driving, okay? So that's the reason why they still exist. Smoking still exists, driving still exists, uh, despite all the negative externalities. Right, so that it's not, it's never hundred percent removal. Of course, you you will say that oh no lah, this is freedom. You know, we are a democratic society. We have freedom to smoke. We have freedom to drive. Right, but the government, um, the government dictates your freedom. Dictates, uh, they, 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 they tell you how much freedom you can have. Right, so. This is externalities, right? So it's very important for me to go through this because uh, you cannot just have textbook understanding of externality. You need to like fully understand what this positive and negative externalities is all about, right? The source or where, I mean the origin or where, where, why got such thing, right? Why is there such a thing called externalities, okay? So you see, I'm giving you an anecdotal examples so that you can remember right if you read the textbook if you read the notes right they don't they don't give you uh stuff like that okay they give you very general generic uh, politically correct statements which you should use for your essays all right so let's see what they talk about what they say right explaining uh, negative externalities so what is a negative externality, right? Starting from here. What is a negative externality, so, right? It's an individual or firm that decided to do something which only considers its private cause. Okay, example is a uh, cigarettes, right? What's, what, what is the private cost of cigarette? Is the $1, $1 that the person paid for the cigarette. However, there's a mar external marginal cost which, which includes third party cost. What is this EMC? It's a cost to third party. So for example, because you smoke that one cigarette, then uh, the fellow must go and see doctor and he must pay, let's say 20 cents, right? That means for every $1 of cigarette smoke, uh, third party suffer 20 cents. Okay, so we call that EMC. The third party suffers 20 cents through the EMC. And since the individual only considers his PMC and not the EMC, he grades PMC with a PMB. Uh, what's PMB? PMB is the private marginal benefit, which is the benefit for the person who smoke, right? He's willing to pay $1 because the benefits that that cigarette brings him is equivalent to $1. Right, this is what I mean by PMC equal to PMB. Private marginal benefit equals to private marginal cost. Right, and he doesn't care about the social cost. That means the cost to third party. Okay, this one don't care first. Okay. Where is it? Okay. However, social efficiency requires SMC equals SMB. Ah, okay, this one later. With the socially efficient output actually at QSE, hence there's overconsumption, right? Negative externality is the first one. There's overconsumption, 
over production or production okay same of goods which incur social costs that exceeds the social benefit this results in David loss okay so this is the proper definition of negative externalities <laughs> do you understand So there are a lot of keywords here, PMC, PMB, EMC, uh, SMC, SMB. All right? So if it's positive externality, uh, we put vice versa here. That means just change it to positive. The argument is the same. Now this is called the five step process of, wait, how many steps? Four steps. Four steps, sorry. Five, right? Four step process of four, sorry, four step process of explaining what is the meaning of positive or negative externalities. It is a standard process, okay? Four step or five step process of uh, explaining externality is always standard. Okay, now this thing you gotta remember, you gotta memorize. Uh, it um, is a, is a, is a guarantee come out kind of question. Okay, this question will guarantee appear in your A levels as well as your common test. Okay. Now, I know that's a big chunk, uh, but do you understand this whole chunk of stuff? One st okay, step one, two, three. Do you understand? Step one, two, three. We go step by step. One, two, three. Do you understand? Do you understand step four? You understand step four? <clears throat> no, okay. So step four is the slightly more difficult thing, okay? So let me explain this thing. Um, now, the other thing is you need to know how to draw this graph, all right? So uh, where do we start from? Well, uh, we start with uh, step one, step two, all right? Step one, step two says that the person will only consider PMC equal PMB. So this is the PMB. This line is the PMB. Let me highlight. PMB, all right? What's the meaning of PMB? Private marginal benefit. What is the definition of Private marginal benefit, do you know? The benefits the firm will receive. Uh, okay, let's use specific example. Secret, use secret. All right, so what's the meaning of PMB? Private marginal benefit, it's not a firm. Is the smoker, the smoker is the private party in this case, All right? So uh, let's talk about the red color line first. Huh? So red color line is downward sloping, why? Because the more cigarette he consumes, the less benefit he will enjoy. Does it make sense? If, yeah, because if the person just smoke one, it feels great. If you smoke two, uh, not too bad. But if you smoke 1,000 in one day, he will be, he will stop smoking for the rest of his life. Okay, because it's like disgusting. It becomes disgusting, right? It's the same with the, I mean, uh, drinks, right? Like this, this, this is nice, nice fizzy water. 
I drink one can, feels good. Drink two can, you know, okay lah, not too bad. Drink five can, I feel like vomiting. So I won't drink it again. So the private marginal benefit decreases the more you consume. So that's why it's downward sloping. And downward sloping is also the demand curve, okay? Why? Because uh, as the price decreases, you consume more. But as the price goes up, you consume less. So it's downward sloping. So that is why we call that the DD equals to the PMB. DD stands for demand equals to PMB. Now PMB equals to social marginal benefit because in this case, the, drink, the, the, the smoking uh, only benefits the person. It doesn't benefit the society. So, so, so PMB equals to SMB. Right? So I've explained the red color line. Now let's take a look at the blue color line. Blue color line is here. Blue. Right? So blue color line upward sloping. Reason is, uh, and it's, it's the PMC line. What's the meaning of PMC? Private marginal cost. Right? The private marginal cost basically uh, is, um, you know, the more you buy, the more you pay <coughs> for the cigarettes, of course, right? So the person, uh, if you consume one, you pay $1. Consume 2000 you pay $2,000. So it's Albert Sloping. And it also, it also represents the supply line. Why? Because supply is Albert Sloping. As the price increases, uh, more people want to supply cigarettes. As the price increases, more people want to supply cigarettes. It's upward sloping. Now, here comes the EMC. What is this EMC? Or rather, how come the SMC equals to PMC plus EMC? Now, so we must understand what's EMC. EMC is the external marginal cost. So this is a cost to third party. Right? Because a third party suffer secondhand smoke, huh? So uh, we determine that you know it's about twenty cents for every cigarette smoke, right? So the cost to the society is not just the cost to the person, because the person pay one dollar, but the overall cost to the society is uh, you must add twenty cents. Why? Huh? Because the third party cannot work huh? due to a person smoking, a third party cannot work. So the cost to society is now higher than the blue color one. Right, so we cover the green color line. Okay, these three color lines, do you understand? The red, blue, green, is there anyone you don't understand? No, okay, well done. So initially, initially, the level of consumption is here. Do, 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 Q. Why? Because, okay, uh, okay, I shouldn't put it initially. The uh, level of consumption, the level of consumption that, that the individual will consume will be at Q. That is more. Why? Because, because at Q is where there's equilibrium. Right, that means uh, Q is where PMC equal PMB. This is where um, the person's, uh, the private ma uh, marginal cost is equal to private marginal benefit. However, the true cost to society is more than that because you need to add the 20 cent. Okay, so the, now the equilibrium is here. This is the color. Right, so now the equilibrium is here. But at this point A, um, SMC is not equal to SMB. What do you mean by that? That means the social marginal cost is not equal to social marginal benefit. Uh, that means someone is suffering from something at this particular point. Okay? Or rather at this point, this is the point where uh, there is no, there's more efficiency. Okay, at point Q, if you dot up, right, 
at B, there's actually more cost that's not being uh, included, right? There's no more cost that's not being uh, calculated. Right, so what we want to do is to bring the point of consumption, the quantity consumed, to this point, QSE. Right, so as you can see here, the Q has to reverse. It must go backwards to the point where the SMC equals to SMB. So yeah, here is equal. Point A, SMC equals to SMB. Uh, at point B, the SMC is not equal to SMB. All right, so PMC equal to PMB at point C, but that's from the individual's point of view, whereas uh, from the government's point of view, they want it to be at A. But from the personal point of view, they are at this point. So it's not what the government wants. The government wants it to reduce to QSE. And therefore, the only way to reduce something with negative externality is to tax, right? So it's tax. Uh, now this is for tax is here, sorry. Right, you implement tax. Okay, so this is the solution. Okay, let's go back to the four step process again. Now what is the four step process? It is for you to explain why something has negative or positive externalities, right? You, you got to use the four step process. Okay. One, two, three, and then four, and then you draw a graph to show negative externality. Okay. Any questions on the graph again? Are you able to explain the graph? That is the important part. Uh, okay, good. So can you try and draw a... Okay, over here we don't have a positive externality graph. Okay, this is negative externality. Can you try and draw a positive externality? Are you able to annotate? Like draw. Draw a positive externality graph to show me the green line below the red line. Oh. Not really. So here we use negative externality. Yeah, no, it's not the green line below the red line. the green line below the blue line. Yep. This four step process you must memorize, right? If you don't understand, or if you understand, um, you should also try to memorize, right? The blue line moves towards the left, the green line shifts towards the right. Green line shifts towards the right. Okay, I draw on this side. Okay, then we can do a comparison. So cost, benefit, <coughs> quantity. So at first, uh, we, what, what, what's PNB? So PNB is downward sloping. Right, private marginal benefit. So now we're going to draw positive externalities. Right, so this is the DD equal P and B. Right, and then um, 
This is the S S equal P M C private module cost. Okay, so we start with here. A will be taller than B. A will be no. It's a it's a completely flipped, flipped diagram. Okay. So now example positive anxiety education. Okay, education. So the uh, so people only consume up to the point where the PMB go to PMC, right? So we call this point Q over here. Okay, however, uh, we know that it has external benefits, right? The consumption of education uh, benefits third party, benefits old Mr. Ting because Ethan buys bench. Ethan pay for bench. Right? So because there's a EMB, your SMB, social marginal benefit, is increased. This is your SMB. It's increased. Right? SMB, why? Eh? Because SMB equals to S M B equal to P M B plus E M B, right? So the social marginal social marginal benefit line is increased. Okay, so where is the now? Is there any um social? Is there any uh external cost for you studying? Don't have right. There's no EMC. So because there's no EMC, your PMC equals to SMC. Now, where is the socially efficient output level? Or where is the level that the government deems is uh, socially um, efficient? Right? It's here. Why? Because this point SMC equals SMB. All right? SMC is this line, SMB is here. Ma. So the socially optimal level of consumption is here, QSE. That's called the socially efficient or socially optimum level of consumption. But we have a problem because you are now at Q and you want them to increase to QSE. What do we do? The government give subsidy. So we are all happy. Got it. So it's a bit like a mirror image. Where you put the mirror? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So you gotta know how to draw this curve, the lines. You need to be able to explain all of this. All right? Step one to four and explanation. Okay, I'm just gonna stop here. Now, uh, it is very, very, very important. Four step process. Draw, write out everything. Also must learn how to draw. All right, this is the most important thing they need to know for the market failure. All right, so let me just summarize what I've done today. So today, today, uh, we talk about externalities. I think that's very important, right? We spend quite a bit of time just about this. Right, it's about third parties, right? We also spend some time talking about public good and we are still at market failure. So market failure, once again, is when the market fails. What's the example of market? It's like a hawker center. It's like someone wants to supply, nobody wants to, someone wants to, wants to eat, but nobody wants to cook, right? So that's public good. How about externalities? It's like if you eat too much, chuck it down, uh, and, then, and, then, and then suddenly you realize that, hey, uh, the government realized that, hey, you know, it's too oily. Like people are getting sick. I, I don't get enough income. So I need to limit the amount of chocolate there. So that is negative externalities. All right. Positive externalities could be sugarcane drink. Uh, people drink sugarcane drink and then, oh, it, it tastes so nice and people are happier. They are working. They are more productive. So I need people to drink more. Uh, this is a sugarcane drink. So the government comes in. Why? Because they want to control the 
they want to control the quantity consumed because certain goods have more benefit to other people. Certain goods have less benefit to other people. But why has the market failed in this case? Because the market did not consider the third party. Got it? The market don't consider the cost to a third party. So the government comes in and declares that hey, there's market failure here, I need to come in. Example, um, our education, positive externality, healthcare, positive externality, uh, cigarettes is negative externality, traffic jam is negative externality. Okay, four step process, draw the curve, that's it. That's what you need to do for today. Right, you got the notes, right? So you can see, uh, your, you, you probably also have the school notes, right? So you can take a look from there. Any final questions? No, okay. Awesome, man. So I'll see you next week, okay? Same time. Meanwhile, enjoy your holiday in the circuit breaker. Are you celebrating? <laughs> are, are you doing anything special? Special. Today is, yesterday was Hari Raya, ma. No, I said, uh, like, any special food? I'm ordering some special food, okay? I'm getting some nice chicken, I think to eat. Okay, bye-bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye.